class. This is a continuation of where we stop a differential equation. So, if you know you are new in this channel, do consider to subscribe to this YouTube channel and ensure you turn on the notification button for you to be notified anytime we release mind-blowing content. And ensure that at the end of this video, you like this current video that you are watching. And please, for you to take full advantage of this content, you must ensure that you do not skip any part of this video. This is for your own advantage. Now guys, let's get started. Now, on the board, we have formation of differential equation. And we are going to be solving problems very quickly. Now, how are differential equations formed, guys? This will be the first thing that we will call to you. How are differential equations formed? Have you known that I have first order differential equation, second order differential equation, third order differential equation, and so many orders of differential equation? How are they formed? How are they formed? That's what we are going to be looking at in this video. Now, guys, mathematically, differential equations are formed, derived, or obtained when arbitrary constants are completely eliminated from a given function. Yes, I will take it again. Mathematically, differential equations are formed, obtained, or derived when arbitrary constants are completely eliminated from a given function. Now guys, what are arbitrary constants? I mean, yes, what are arbitrary constants? This you will get to know when we look at the first problems that you have on the board. Now, the very first question that we have here, guys, we are asked to form a differential equation from the function y is equal to a sine x plus b cos x. We have y is equal to a sine x plus b cos x. Now, of course, when we define differential equation, there we are only two variables that we mention. Of course, in this question now, we have four variables. The number one variable that we have here is y, number two is a, number three is x, and number four is b. These are the variables that we have here, right? Now, but when we were defining differential equation, understand that we only have two variables that we mentioned while we were defining differential equation. These variables were what? Dependent variables and the word independent variable. Yes, the variable were dependent and independent variable. Of course, we said that y is a dependent variable, dependent. And x is what the independent variable. So these are the two variables that are recognized in differential equation. Any other variable that is here is referred to as arbitrary constant. Of course, I told you that I'm going to explain what arbitrary constants are. Now, I, I hope it's clear now. If we know why to be dependent variable, we know as to be independent variable of which these two variables were what was defined in our definition of what differential equation. Therefore, A and B will therefore be defined as constant. Then, A and B are the arbitrary constants in this question. So now, what do we do when we have two arbitrary constants? What do we do? When we have one arbitrary constant, what do we do when we have three arbitrary constant in one function, guys? Listen carefully. I want to give you a particular condition. I want to give you a boundary condition that will help you to become a master in solving problems in differential equation. Now, guys, look at it. Anytime you want to form a differential equation, first thing you must do is to take note of the numbers of arbitrary constants that are present. Yes, 
That, these are the first thing you do. You must first of all ensure that you get to know the num number of arbitrary constants that are present in the question that you are given. So now, if I have one arbitrary constant, listen to this question. If I have one arbitrary constant, I am going to have first order differential equation in my as, as my answer. Now we have to find the differential equation here. For me, differential equation, we do not know whether this equation function here will land us a first order differential equation. We do not know whether it's going to turn out to be first order, second order, third order, fourth order, and so on and so forth. How do I know? Because it is always good, like I do always tell students, it is good that you know the promised land while you are still at Egypt. Yes, it is good that you know the promised land, the road to the promised land, or you know the beauty of the promised land while you are still in Egypt, thinking of how to get to the promised land. Now, guys, look at this. If my expectation is to derive a differential equation, of course, it should turn out to be one of the differential equations, right? Either first order, second order, or third order. Now, from the question, guys, I'm going to give you a secret. You can know from the given function whether you are going to have first order, second order, third order, and so on and so forth. This is the master builder's concept, right? Yes, the MBL fountain of impact. We want to quickly unveil some secrets that will help you as a student. Now, listen. Anytime I have one arbitrary constant, the resulting differential equation will be first order differential equation. You will get that later as we begin to solve. Then, when you have two arbitrary constants, guys, you will definitely Second order differential equation. Then when you have theory arbitrary constants, you are inevitably going to have third order differential equation. Guys, if this is understood, let me quickly explain. For first order differential equation, you differentiate one for you to eliminate the arbitrary constant. That is why it will give you first order differential equation. Now, when you have two arbitrary constants, all of these things you see me say here, they are the rules that will guide you through solving problems on differential equation, guys. So, when you have two arbitrary constants, it will require you to differentiate the given function two times for you to be able to eliminate the arbitrary constants. Then also, if you are given theory arbitrary constant in one function, you will need to differentiate three consecutive times before you will be able to eliminate the arbitrary constant. So if this is understood, first is that for you to be able to form arbitrary constants, you must ensure that this A and B are nowhere to be found in this question or in this function. You must successfully remove it. And the only way you can remove A and B, or the only way you can eliminate A and B, which happens to be the arbitrary constant, is to differentiate, and every time you differentiate, you make one of them the subject of formula. This is how it is. So if this is understood, now let's get started with this very question number one. Alright? Now guys, we have here A sine B. Now guys, we have A sine X plus B cos X. So the first thing you do, like I said, is to differentiate this function. So I'm going to have the Y over the X is equal to, guys, when I differentiate sine X, I'm going to have cos X. So I will have A cos X. Then plus, when you differentiate plus B, now when you differentiate cos X, guys, you are going to have minus sine X. Therefore, so we have to rearrange this as the y over the x is equal to a cos x plus sine minus. We are going to have minus b sine x. This is equation one. Then equation two. This is equation one, guys. Then the next thing we are going to do is to differentiate this function again. All right. Now we are going to differentiate again, which becomes the second derivative dy. The square y over the y. 
the square y over the x square is equal to that. I want to differentiate equation 1 to get equation 2. Understand that to obtain the second derivative, you need to differentiate the first derivative to get the second derivative. For me to get the third derivative, I need to differentiate the second derivative to get the third derivative, and so on and so forth. No. Now, if this is taken, when you differentiate this function here, put down the constant. When I differentiate cos s, guys, we are going to have minus sine x minus b. And if you differentiate sine s, you are going to have cos s. Now, when we rearrange this, we are going to have d square y over d s square will be equal to minus a sine x minus b sine x. This will we call equation 2. Guys, hope this is very, very explanatory. Please, do not skip any part of this video as I always echo. Now, listen carefully. At this point, there is a condition that I want to quickly let you know that any time you want to obtain or form a differential equation and all the function you are given is a trigonometrical function which contains sine and cos. Guys, listen to this. Anytime you want to form a first order, anytime you are you want to form a differential equation, guys, and the function you are given is a trigonometrical function, guys, you don't make a or b, which happens to be arbitrary constant, the solid formula. All you simply do is to differentiate two times in as much as you have two arbitrary constants just differentiate two times the next thing you do is to see how you can factorize one of the equation then put back the original question now listen you may not get that session now we have ha we now have that this square y over the x square is equal to minus a sine s minus o minus a sine s minus b cos x. Now, we call this one equation 2. Now, guys, from equation 2, which happens to be the second derivative, you will see that this equation 2 is currently looking like equation 1. Can you see that way? Yes. Here, we have plus plus, but here, we have minus minus. Of course, we can deduce this function to also appear as plus plus. Are we there? Now, so what do we do? We are going to factorize this equation here. And therefore, we are going to have d squared y over d s squared is equal to what is common here is just minus 1. So I open a bracket, put out my minus 1. Minus 1 is what is common here. So put out the minus 1, open a bracket, we are going to have a sine x plus what? b cos x. This will have become equation 3. Now, the next thing we are quickly going to do, guys, is to substitute equation 1 into equation 3. Why are we doing this? Because what we have enclosed inside this bracket is exactly as equation 1. That is to say, we can possibly re replace everything inside this bowl of brackets by what? Because everything inside this bracket was represented by what? From the question. So, therefore, I can substitute y for this in equation 3. Hence, we are going to have d square y over the s cube square will be equal to minus y. It's as simple as this. All we need to do is to arrange it again. There we are having d square y over the s square. Now, when we take minus y to the left hand side, from the right hand side, the sign changes to plus y. This will be equated to zero. This is the differential equation. Now, at this point, you see that we have successfully eliminated A and B, which happens to be the arbitrary constants. This is it. So, what type of differential equation is this, guys? This is second order differential equation. It's as simple as this. Hope this is now guys, if you still do not understand this by watching this video once, please, you can pause this video, replay it and watch it over and over again until the principle seeks to be Now, very quickly we are
are going to start looking at example 2. Yes, this example 2 is going to blow up the mind. 